But some news out of Australia. So Australian-backed blockchain company PowerLedger is apparently migrating to Solana from Ethereum. They're looking for higher speed and scalability. I thought this was interesting. So PowerLedger, if you don't know about it, it's uh, an energy blockchain. It's built to audit and streamline the buying and selling of renewable energy, kind of an interesting project. Um, but yeah, they've seen that Solana is a better service for them. They're looking at, you know, the the low transaction uh, per minute limit. Um, and they're just saying Solana is is better suited to their needs. I wanted to ask the group, I mean, we've heard of a few projects now that have been eyeing Solana and saying this is the next thing. Um, and there have been two camps of thought. There's one saying, you know, Ethereum 2.0, it's in the works. And when that happens, Ethereum really is just going to skyrocket. Um, but there is a question of timing. Will they do it in time that they can still retain a lot of the uh, the uh, projects that are built on Ethereum because some of them just can't afford to wait another year, another two years, the indefinite amount of time that this project is going to take to get going. So they are leaving. They are going to Binance Smart Chain. They are going to Tezos. They are going to Solana. They're, they're exploring all of these competitors. So I'm I'm not sure what, what is going to happen. I, um, I'm kind of hedging my bets and thinking that both could be an option, but I'm wondering if anyone from the group uh, is swayed one way or the other. Adam, I'm going to throw it to to you is the is is fidelity right is the future of ethereum bright and they're going to you know forge ahead or are more companies or blockchains i should say like solana going to start capturing more and more of the market share i think the answer broadly is yes <laughs> so i think, I think <laughs> both of the things that you just said there are true i think that we are going to see projects continue to sort of uh, diversify into other protocols and that makes sense for a lot of projects but again, this comes back to the old Yogi Berra quote, which is that that place is too crowded. Nobody ever goes there. So nobody goes there, right? Uh, I, I just totally butchered that. But the reality of it is, is that <laughs> this perfect. is largely Ethereum's game to lose, right? <laughs> uh, Ethereum has done a great job of building community and then also of just building incredible zeitgeist around the project that they are pushing on. So right now, we're very much in the same situation that Bitcoin is, but for kind of the everything but money use case that Ethereum has chosen to follow. I think that even if Ethereum winds up taking a long time, uh, in order to roll out a true, you know, second version that is highly scalable and follows many of the characteristics of many of the projects that they're losing, uh, you know, that they're losing some of these projects to. Um, I, I still think that it will wind up being a very strong player just by nature of how much momentum. And then again, as it rises as an institutional asset, as we were just discussing in the Fidelity story, I think that has a whole other dimension. And I, I think it'll be very challenging for any other project to overtake that. It's not to say they won't gain projects, but it is to say that in aggregate, Ethereum is very likely to be the winner here. Yeah, I think like, you know, Ethereum could capture the financial markets and, and do just fine. That would be a huge undertaking in, in and of itself. And I think there's a lot of these projects that sort of launched a little bit ahead of the game, a little bit ahead of the technology stack, right? Where these, these sort of like not super duper heavy, hardcore DeFi financial stuff, but could do cool stuff that would benefit from a ledger that uh, is public and can handle mainstream throughput. And so some of these other proof of stake chains that have emerged as Ethereum has considered its own proof of stake evolution, it would really make sense that these projects would jump to those networks uh, that might be faster, cheaper, and you know better suited to the the goals that they're trying to accomplish. So um, you know this won't be this won't be the last of these stories. We'll see a lot of these uh, projects that were born on Ethereum realize that other networks may be better suited to their to their aims. Um, Will, I think I saw your hand up, so take it. Yeah, a question for Naomi. Power Ledger, can you explain what they do a little bit more? Because I don't understand why they need a blockchain or why they need a fast one either. That is a great question, Will, and a lot of people in Australia can't understand what they do and okay. uh, why they need a blockchain either. It's, it's an interesting project. They're very, I mean, there was probably like the first big Australian uh, blockchain project. And when it came out, it was at a time when no one really understand blockchain in general. And if you add like energy sharing on top of that, how do you like use this as an efficient way to distribute excess energy? Like it's just super confusing. And I think a lot of people are still in that boat. I'm personally still in that boat. So I'm sorry, I can't be much much help there. But there are also critics of it who say that they probably don't need yeah. a blockchain for this. So, um, but yeah, maybe we can chat about that on another show and dig into it and let people know about it.